students, the faculty, you know, I've had a good time with everybody here and, um, and uh, maybe because of the cold I've been more at ease and uh, maybe because of the people, you know. I don't know, you know, the, uh, I mean, you know, there are, there are categories that, that happen but, uh, but I think the, uh, I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff now is kind of in this middle ground where it's not quite one thing or another. That uh, certainly doesn't isn't a problem at the science museums, uh, and in the art spaces, it kind of depends. You know, the curators feel that they need to have some way to describe what you're doing, and um, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, they they like to put you in a category to do that. You know, like kinetic art, and um, which um, you know, which of course that was so 70s. Um, so you know. Although I like to point out to them that, that conceptual art was very 70s. That was, <laughs> and of course, that's also very au courant now. So it's, uh, there are almost any good art has got some concepts going on in it, exactly. for sure. Exactly. But, you know, but I think the idea of conceptual art was to, was to avoid the, the, the actual making, the craft, and to try to, to try to convey the concept directly in some way without going through a made object and through a, uh, um, through a, um, uh, well, actually, sometimes to avoid the object, even. <laughs> By the time I was, got interested in art, I was already in graduate school in psychology, and I was, you know, so I was already past a lot of these stages of life. I was, you know, I had a daughter, I had a divorce, I had, you know, there were a lot of things that had already happened by then. And, uh, you know, so um, I might not have had enough patience, but uh, I don't know, you were at that other little talk I was talking about how I, uh, I tried to get into intro sculpture and they wouldn't take me because I wasn't an art major. So I, I you know, I lied and told them I had the prerequisites and I signed up for advanced sculpture, which it wasn't so much that I thought I was beyond intro sculpture, it was just that, uh, that you know, they wouldn't let me in any other way and I wanted to see if I could learn a little more about this because I really didn't know what I was doing, you know. And, uh, you know, as I was saying in that talk, the teacher was never there. So, uh, you know, I actually learned a lot from books I took out of the library. I could have done it on my own. But there was a TA there who was pretty amazing and uh, showed me how to do stuff, um, you know. So, yeah. but, but for me, it, was, it probably worked out, worked out uh, pretty well because, um, because I mean, some of the first pieces I, I did when I was taking these classes were kind of copies of works of the people who had got who were teaching the classes. They found this embarrassing because you know I mean I was supposed to be finding my own voice or something, but I wanted to find out what it was about what they were doing that interested me, and I figured if I tried to make something like what they did, it would inform what I was doing, and then. You know, and and teach me what I want, what I was uh, interested in, and uh, I think that probably worked. Although it didn't allow me to get into graduate school because I didn't have this unique body of work. So I, I you know, another failure. That was that workshop was on failure. Just you know, a whole series of failures that led to the the, the horrible success I am now. You know. <laughs> which of course is a way to kind of join the dominant group, you know, and who do you want to be? <laughs>
you know, uh, who do you want to identify with, and, or, you know, is it possible to get beyond it, as you were suggesting, uh, by way of, you know, with, uh, you know, so, you know, so in the analogy of applying to, for different things, if you apply to 10,000 things, then no rejection is going to be a problem. Their advice is actually the same, Samuel Beckett has some advice about this too. He says, um, you know, try, fail, try again, fail again, try again, fail better. <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and in a way this is, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's odd because it has to do with our psychology more than the world. But it's about desensitizing oneself to failure. Um, it, you just need to get more of it, <laughs> is what they're saying. You need to fail more often. You, you haven't failed enough. That's why you feel bad about it. If you fail more often, it'll be fine. But you did a, you did a piece, you know, uh, called The Magnificent Failure. It was a three-part series about Lee DeForest, famous radio inventor. Um, actually, the inventor of electronics. You know, um, everything that we have, in a sense, uh, comes from uh, DeForest's invention. Although the story of the invention makes it not clear that DeForest was the inventor, even. <laughs> it's all, but nevertheless, the, the, uh, he invented the three-element tube that amplifies things. When DeForest sent, uh, I mean, when my father sent DeForest the manuscript for this, he threatened to sue. <laughs> the Saturday Evening Post, he said, you know, what do you mean failure, you know? Now they would be worried about it. DeForest was, um, you know, was a, I think uh, a failure seven times and a, and a fabulous success, a millionaire six times. <laughs> Well, you know, the whole question of originality, I, it's, um, it's odd because I don't know that anyone really does anything that's completely new. Um, you know, uh, what was, I, I think it might have been T.S. Eliot that was saying something like, uh, everything, uh, oh, talent imitates but genius steals. <laughs> And I think, you know, there's a, a kind of a lesson in that because when you're imitating, you're really borrowing something. You're not, you're not, you haven't made it yours. When you've stolen something, it's yours. And you can do with it what you want. You know, you can paint that car you stole a different color because you want to avoid the cops and stuff. But, you know, but you can, but you can also change, you know, you start to change it. It starts to, whatever ideas you've taken from other people start to transform in your own hands because your experience is different, your, you know, your time may be different. Uh, you know, I'm fond of stealing ideas from uh, the 19th century and, the, and, and other times in the past. Uh, um, for one thing, the, no one is, can cry foul. And, uh, but, but also, yeah, I don't know, it just resonates. I feel like I, you know, I understand that technology. I, I know how to do things like that and then I kind of pervert them into something that, you know, either comments on or somehow relates to dilemmas that we're realizing now, which might not be the same as what, uh, you know, like Marais was dealing with in the 19th century. So, um, you know, uh, you know, so is that my work original? You know, sometimes it's playing off of Marais' work. It's an original play on Marais' work. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then I have other things that, are original, but I didn't invent the differential gear that I used in my most recent piece. Um, I'm using, you know, something that's uh, that has been well well used, and even using it in a way as a calculating device that has been used, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, by you know, especially by the the Navy and gunnery computers during the Second World War. So. Um, Yes, it's not the differential that's in your car, but it's the same thing. It's just, uh, and, and that in your car, it's also making a calculation. It's just that you don't see it as that. <laughs> so it's not just your own work you're thinking of here. You're Nothing thinking of getting like rid of everyone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you know, it would be kind of like, so, but we work so hard. Well, he, you know, 
There's a, there's a great uh, apocryphal story, it probably is true. Um, he, uh, so in 67, which I could have gone to it, but I wasn't interested in art so much then. In 67, uh, Duchamp was, uh, had a retrospective in Pasadena, which was pretty much his only serious uh, show in the US. Um, and even by 67, you know, the, his impact was, big, was certainly manifest in a lot of arenas. And um, um, so it was pretty well attended, but, but he still was not like, you know, a famous art star. Nevertheless, he was enough of one. So he's, uh, he's quite old then, you know, uh, at that point. I don't know how old. And, um, uh, you know, uh, at the you know, the, 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 what is it, I don't know, the preview opening, the one where, where all the donors to the museum get to go to. And um, they had, they all had a poster of the, of the show. And uh, one of them came up to him and said, uh, Monsieur Duchamp, uh, please would you sign my poster? And he said, sure, you know, and he signs this poster. And pretty soon there was a queue of people who lined up um, with posters for him to sign and someone to produce a table and a chair really quickly before the director had even noticed this was going on. And the director ran over and he said, Marcel, Marcel, you're the star of this. You don't need to be doing this, this stuff. He says, no, no, I love it. It cheapens everything. So you know he you know he he was seeing I, I think you know what he could see was he could see he could see the the politics of art as well as as well as the ideas of art as well as the prejudices the fads you know he was you know so in some sense he was smarter than than you know than um, than certainly than most people of his time and um, you know and we're still reworking a lot of his lessons. I also do like, you know, people playing with the pieces. It's, uh, it brings them alive and sometimes suggests how mistaken I was in what I thought people were going to do with it. And it always, you know, suggests like another like stage or at least a tweak that I need to, to do. Um, and, uh, and I, you know, and, you know, I've got, I've got a decent sized ego. I, uh, I like the acclaim, you know, that I get when I get it and I am hurt when I don't. And, um, you know, so all of these things are, uh, are part of that. You know, on the other hand, uh, I don't think they're, they're instrumental. It's not the reason that I'm doing it. It's more of an, uh, an obsession, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Jean Tingley had a line about, um, you know, someone asked, told him, your pieces are so much fun, you must have a great time making these. And he said, well, you know, making art is not so much about having fun. It's like having an itch. You scratch it, you feel better for a while.